Welcome back. Now, some of you may think that having a perfect six-pack... <laughs> not, not talking about me, to be honest. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> ..and a strict <laughs> skincare routine means you don't have too much going on between the ears. But our next guest is proof that having the looks does not mean you can't have a sharp mind. Yeah, Jay Younger, who is a contestant on this year's Love Island, may well be Britain's hottest financial expert, and we're delighted to say that he joins us now to give us some money-saving tips and to talk about adjusting to the world of finance after uh, the stint in the famous villa. Fantastic to have you here. I know lots of people shocked that actually you're a financial expert if they've only ever been used to seeing you on TV with your kit off. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Before we get onto your uh, onto your uh, your tips, are you, have you got any juicy gossip that you can tell us about <laughs> from your time on uh, on Love Island? Yeah, it was uh, it was it was really fun. You know, it was an amazing experience. Um, it. It wasn't what I expected, but it was so fun. And um, you know, I think anyone who's lucky enough to go into the villa um, will have a great time in there. It's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit of a social experiment being surrounded uh, by lots of single people and trying to find love. Jay, did you put yourself up for the show, or did somebody else put you up for the show? Um, I was uh, I was approached uh, by ITV yeah, to go on the show. Um, so they sent a message in my Instagram and asked if I would I'd be willing to audition. And uh, yeah, it just happened so fast. So I wasn't expecting it, to be honest. I was actually working in the office at the time when I first got the DM. And when you've watched it back, have you ever thought it wasn't like that? It didn't happen like that. That was edited out of context. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the biggest bit is that some parts when you're in the villa um, at, at a time were very serious for us in there. But for the viewers, it, was, it came across as hilarious. And uh, I think that's the biggest disconnect that I realised, actually, that some of the moments that were more serious were actually quite fun on the outside. <laughs> I was, I, was, I was actually going to ask you about uh, why you wanted to go on, but there were all those beautiful women in, the, in there. I, I thought that was, a, that was a ridiculous question. So, uh, Jay, tell us about your life as a financial expert and, um, and what, what is it that uh, our viewers should be doing to help them get through this cost of living crisis? Well, yeah, so I, I'm an investment analyst, um, so I directly look at the stock markets and investing or allocating capital to companies that we think have the ability to, to grow their earnings uh, by a certain percentage each year. But in terms of money-saving tricks, um, I mean, quite simple. I mean, first, I'd just say keep track of your spending. You know, it's helpful to see what your outgoings are every month. So go through your bank accounts and look at your inflows and outflows and really prioritize what do you actually need as opposed to what do you want, during this, particularly during this time of a cost of living. Um, the second point I say is just just save regularly where you can. Like for example, it's the weekend just now. If you haven't shopped at a discounter supermarket before, like a uh, Aldi or Lidl, go go check them out. You know they are significantly cheaper than uh, your main four supermarkets, and also secondhand shops, clothing shops, and um, pre-loved items are very cheap too, and they're very very good style too. And the last thing I'd say is um, if you are passionate about something. Um, and it, just start the side hustle, you know, try and monetize your passion and see where you get, you know, it's diversify your income just like you would with investing and see, have some fun with it as well. I know we're in a cost of living crisis and everything is, is tough right now, but just remember we're all in this together and the tough time will pass. So if there's an opportunity to do something outside your full, full time of income, then, then try it. Now, Jay, one thing you said there, it is look at what your outgoings are. And I know sometimes I'm shocked and I've usually done it at the end of the year and it was way too late then to think, oh, my goodness, did I spend that much on coffee? Did I spend that much on whatever uh, going out? So you would say do it, what, weekly, monthly? I mean, you've got to get on top of things and change uh, your outgoings. Yeah, absolutely. I think just every month, if you can, I know it sounds quite tedious, but in the evenings, just really try and burn the midnight oil, as they say, and go through your statements. And it might take an hour or two, but if you can really just get full visibility on what your outgoings are, and then you can prioritize what do you actually need versus what do you want, you can probably save quite a bit of cash doing that. 